we're in our 20s and the generation under us and that are like in their teens are just very aware of climate change and the climate crisis and um, are worried about what's going to happen with our planet and I think there's just an underlation in the younger generation of our voices not being heard like Nia is saying in the animation which we'll watch later um, like where as students are being forced to make major life decisions of what school we go to what we study and it all seems very final but then when we're actually passionate about something um, like climate change in this case our human rights we're not really being heard so um, I think that's sort of what the project started on yeah, because I mean, whenever whenever you sort of came to us with the idea, Isabel, um, that was one of the first things that went in my head was previously talking to Nia and here talk about all these kind of frustrations in life and how it felt like even only at sort of 16, 17 that everything was getting away from her and she didn't know what um, kind of she was entitled to and what she was sort of allowed to ask for and allowed to sort of aim for. Um, and I think it was, yeah, it was really, really interesting to be able to firstly show Nia, but then Nia kind of can show her friends that all of these things can be achieved and all of these things are fundamentally a right. Um, and on top of that is the is a similar right to protect the environment and, and ensure that you have somewhere safe to live in and grow and educate yourself and all of that really important stuff. It almost comes into that lack of access to information that we didn't really have 10 years ago about, well, the climate crisis to an extent it wasn't a mainstream issue mm. and responses to it weren't, uh, it wasn't widespread outrage. It was definitely a minority and it seems now that there needed to be kind of more holistic approach to education and how you can actually influence policy whenever you become an adult and go to university. Yeah, what I loved about um, recording the interviews at first, Nia was kind of shy because she hadn't met us like at first and then like we kind of guided her a bit into it saying like look this is really free we just want to basically hear your opinion like tell us about your experience how is it with your friends in school how do you feel about all of this and then we got two hours of like raw material out of it because she just started talking and then she was saying, this is frustrating me and this is frustrating and my friends do this and my friends do that. But then when there actually is something we think we can go to and help like the uh, Fridays for Future March, school was making it basically impossible for the students to go there and forcing them to stay in school because over some failed day or they would be marked down in their marks because they're attending um, the demonstration and they were only allowed to go with their par parents um, permission slips and I, I just feel like a lot of the times the education system is maybe putting unnecessary blocks into people's ways while um, a bit of support would like help so many people realize how important they are as a single person in this movement because often I feel like the message is you need to be a perfectly informed human rights activist or a perfect eco activist, or you have to like live this perfect zero waste lifestyle. That's not true. Every little thing counts, which is why we put the emphasis then on her, for example, on the way to school, picking up um, rappers because that counts, like that rapper is off the street and out of nature. So I think a lot of students and young people in general are kind of made to feel insignificant because their voices aren't heard and they're just sort of pushed into this mold that society kind of needs them to be in. Like, go get your education, go into a job, like care about stuff later, but that's not an option for us anymore. Like we need to care now and we need to act now. Yeah, and that was kind of the... The intention behind a lot of the animation was that we wanted Nia to begin as this kind of singular, alone, isolated character where she was trying to affect change. But then as she sort of moved through the story that she was met with other people and there was kind of a rallying crowd around her and that was where sort of real fundamental change was going to come through. But I think so much of that was that we were able to work with Jonathan and he was able to help us kind of 
find that audio and give us that sound to make it real and, and make it feel real, you know? Yeah, exactly. I think sound was a major aspect of like bringing sort of the emotion we had behind it because obviously just Nia talking was powerful, but then like the, the sounds coming in and then pairing up with the animation, I think made it a statement. So um, yeah, um, Jonathan, maybe you want to talk about um, how you went about finding the sounds because I know we just gave you the script and some ideas yeah. uh, because we hadn't worked with it so far, but then you came up with a really lovely sound design there. Well, like for the protest uh, bits, uh, there is like so much out there because like usually when I'm using that kind of stuff it's usually like free audio I can find on the internet and there were so many um, clips of like protest for exactly what you're discussing you know about the climate so that was very surprising like you know from England from Northern Ireland there was actually quite a lot of material I could use which I just thought that was actually very surprising like the fact it's such a big issue. Yeah, I guess that was kind of, we wanted to to amplify that and show that there are Fridays for Future marches and there are various marches, but it's as important as someone just picking up rubbish on their way to school or way to work or whatever. And it's hmm. those little small things can lead into those bigger protests. And it's a great thing that the sound is so much more available because the protests are becoming more and more, more and more frequent. Um and I think it's it's wonderful that we were able to to find that and just kind of go, this is something that's important. These people are saying this is important. Maybe you should look at it and see why it's see see why it's important too, you know? Yeah, exactly. I think it's um the, the importance of it is that like every little thing counts, which I think is our main message of the animation. So um whether it's standing up to your teacher uh, who's telling you to do something that you don't feel comfortable or picking up wrappers or going to a march. All of these things matter. And that's what we wanted to convey in the animation, which I think we're going to go and watch now. So um, we hope you enjoy. I know from the walk from the bus stop to school every morning, tea sausage roll packets fall over the ground and it would literally just be me walking down the road picking up wrappers and throwing them in the bin because you kind of feel frustrated as well because if you're doing something and someone else isn't, you kind of feel like that's cancelling out what you're doing. People who are younger feel like they don't have a voice because they had to go through the struggle of trying to get adults to listen to them. It's like these people are the ones that are the adults, they're the ones that are meant to look after you, but they'll still put you in the situation of, oh, you're 16, 17 years old, decide your university, decide your life choices, um, that's your future, but I'm working towards a future that might not be there. The whole point you go to school is to be educated and stuff. I don't even think I could say half my human rights because it's not really one of those list of things that you learn. But now because something's wrong is being done against me, I feel like I need to educate myself on what I need to know, what's right and wrong and what I am entitled to as a human. <laughs> 